We're now on heat sink number five. And this is the M2 copper heat sink cooler for a laptop. So the title of this video will be M.2 copper heat sink cooler for an M.2 2280 SSD laptop. And there's two in the pack. We're going through six different heat sinks, this being package number five, and this one is specific to a laptop, so some of the parameters are going to be a little bit different. And this all started as a result of the M.2 dual adapter cards working with the Supermicro. And the Supermicro card, our test, is the dual M.2 NVMe adapter, which requires eight lanes, so we're bifurcated in the BIOS for four lanes for each drive. Our test drive we're going to work with is the WD Black SN850. And this product that says Yay Tang is this product, the M.2 Copper, which, if you'll notice, one of the heat sinks we've already looked at is MHQ JRH. Just wanted to point that out. And here they've outlined 100% copper, real effective and high performance. And as some of you have mentioned about the properties of the different materials, I want to save all that for the summation. What I want to focus on right now is the product as it exists in the stock. And then what we're going to do when we get to that point is we'll take the top two, this being one specifically because it's for a laptop, which will be for a separate video. But we want to see how it's going to perform because we're dealing with different parameters. And those parameters being this is made for a laptop. So as it relates to copper, we're only dealing with one part of the equation which is the copper heat sink and the number two, the thermal pad, of which we'll do in a separate video, change out that pad. Okay, the other element we're not taking uh, into account or consideration is what's going to be on top of that copper in a laptop. So right now we're bare copper. So my goal, knowing that the SN850 reaches a temperature of 92 degrees bare, so my goal is I would like to see this drive reach 10 degree temperature less making it 82 degrees, which puts it in the safe zone, supposedly below 86. That's what I want to find out. And then, of course, later find out, changing out the thermal pad and see if that helps. So, and then we have number six still to do, which is also copper, but it's a different kind of copper. Some of you have mentioned. We'll see how well it does. So this will be an unboxing, installation, and examination. Then we'll test. Comes in a sealed box. A couple of slices to open this up. We'll see what's inside the box. Now I expect there's going to be three items. Let's take a look at those. According to the listing on Amazon, we'll have the heat sink, the thermal pad, and rubber O-rings. There's also a cleaning kit here. A couple of wipes. Wipe number one wet, wipe number two which is dry. So we have four items. Installation height, 1.5 millimeter to 2.5 millimeter, equipped with 0.5 millimeter and 0.8 millimeter thick silicone thermal pads suitable for different installation spaces. The nano thermal pad with good thermal conductivity. They do not give the rating. We'll get into that rating later when we test those pads. Wide compatibility. And these are going to be for specifically M.2 NVMe 2280 SSDs, PCI Express. So PCI Express 3, PCI Express 4. Now to reiterate, uh, the test system that we're working with is the Super Micro card. And this Supermicro Dual M.2 NVMe PCI Express adapter is spec'd out at PCI Express 3. However, we're going to put PCI Express 4 drives on here. The primary, the WD Black SN850, and the secondary is the Samsung 980 Pro. We're only going to test the top drive. We're testing one at a time. It's easier to see. It's easier to test. And if we need to do some more tests, we can come back, test the other drive. What we're trying to establish is what is the baseline with the product as it exists in the box. Once we have those parameters, then we have something to work with. And with that baseline, then we know if we can proceed if what we do on the next step is going to make any difference or not. So I want to thank you guys for joining us. By the way, this is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. Welcome. Let's see how well this performs. So Yay Tang is the same as MHQ JRH. I just think that's kind of interesting. Uh, it's like, you know, who's on first to the product? Product manual. And not O-rings, but uh, bands. And if those are thermal bands, those are a different kind of thermal bands. We'll set those aside. Our two heat sinks. And it looks like the thermal pads are already attached. And our two wipes. Good idea. It's interesting how these are sealed. I wish they'd have given the, uh, the rating on these pads. That would have helped. But no matter. We'll test with the other and see. We'll see how this does with this. 
We need to know this before we try this in the ASUS laptop because when we open that laptop, we need to verify that laptop, one, that we can put it in there because we need to find out the connector, which means we need to visually inspect it. And then once we get in there and have it, because just because we have BIOS support, we need to see if the uh, other technology that's required to mount the M.2, is, which would be the connector, the screw, uh, the mounting, and some type of uh, thermal layer is installed in there. Otherwise, that may make this fruitless because just because we can put an M.2 drive in a machine, we got to consider the heat because uh, these things, uh, it's like cooking bacon or frying eggs. We've got we to gotta cover both those bases. So I want to know as much as I can about the heat sink before I try to install the heat sink in the laptop because that's a big deal to open up a laptop. So let's open these up. Kind of like opening up a package on a new hard drive. My concern with the way they've got those marks on there and the way that's sealed, uh, those uh, marks for tearing the package open should have been on this end, but that's my opinion. Okay, the product manual. Step one, use one wet wipe bag number one to remove dirt on the front side of the M.2 SSD, the side with the chips. Use the dry wipe bag number two to make it dry. Then step number two, remove the protective film on both sides of the heat conducting silicone pad. And it looks like the pads are already uh, stuck down. We'll see when we get to that. Step number three, put the silica gel pad on the front side of the M.2 SSD. To make it at the middle part of the M.2 SSD. Later, put the back side of the heat sink on the silica gel pad, then press it with your fingers gently. And they call these rubber bands. Use a rubber band to secure both ends of the M.2 SSD. So they have included six, and they say to use two. So I would think you would want to use three, but we'll consider those spares and we'll just use two. Since this is going to be a uh, temporary installation for testing because we still have number six to do. Out of the package? Ah, they're just in the package. They're not already stuck down. And uh, from the looks of this, these look like they're die cut on a large uh, punch press. And I imagine they cut these out of a sheet. So what you'll have is an edge that's beveled on one side and a little bit of a, of course these aren't rough. They may have uh, polished them a little bit. But you can feel the top side and the bottom side that's a little bit sharper. Okay, we have plenty of pads, a thick pad and a thin pad. So for this test, we're going to use the thick pad. I'll set the thin one aside. And in this setup, it looks like the thick pads are closest to the copper. Now, as always, follow manufacturer's instructions. And they've also included two sets of pads. I'm surprised. Two sets of pads, so you can one, use one pad on each one of the... Uh, Copper heat sinks. Nice. Removes excessive dirt. That's a good idea. And what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and use that on the memory. And no, I'm not taking off the uh, labels. And yes, taking the labels off would reduce the heat. But if I took the labels off, I wouldn't know which drive is which. And with the testing we do, I have to know who's on first. Okay, I'm going to open that pad up to reverse this. And then I'm going to clean the copper itself has a slight, slight smell of an alcohol-based cleaner. Professional screen cleaning paper. Okay, and then we'll uh, set that one aside. We'll set the cleaning pad aside over there with the two thin pads. And then we'll go to the dry wipe. I like their attention to detail. I've, I've got to admit, though, I've never done this with, the, uh, with an M.2 drive. This is something I normally do with a CPU. The okay, first pad. I want to do a dry run, and I want to get an idea of how that's going to sit as I line up the device with the memory, the pad, and the notch, how that's going to sit. So that's what I want to find out. And since we want to keep the controller cool, we're going to come down to this end just a tad. So that gives me some idea of space relations, what I'm working with. That's what I wanted to find out. And then I should be able to take this and just turn it right up on that and I have my sandwich. Okay, let's peel and stick. And I used a micro screwdriver to grab the end of that. Made that just a little bit easier. And I will save those protective covers so that I can reuse them. These thermal pads aren't as stiff as some we've used. Okay, line that up again. That still looks good. So all we need to do is just peel this off the top 
Place it on it, we should be good to go. Catch the corner with a screwdriver, gingerly. Lift that up, peel, a couple of bubbles. Those will come back down. Save those plastic sheets so I can put them back on, protect the memory. Next, now let's uh, make our sandwich. And that should be able to go straight down. We're gonna line up based on this end. And this is a single-sided drive. Looks pretty good. We can see how that works. Looks like that's perfectly sized. We'll clear the connector and we're perfectly lined up on this end. So that'll clear. Clear the screw. That could be back just a tad. That looks good. And that end clears the connector. That looks good. We're lined up. I can work with that. Now for our bands. And to help with my manual dexterity, since I have anti-static gloves on, I'll use the micro screwdriver to help me open this package. All the bands that we've seen so far for thermal bands were clear. These are black, kind of like a kind of like a tiny fat rubber band. So I'm sure these have thermal characteristics that uh, I'm not aware of for heat. We'll see. And I expect they're going to be a little bit tricky to get out too and put on. So there's two bands. Set the rest of those aside. Let's see how this is going to work. If I can secure that with my thumb on one corner or with my index finger on one corner. Oh, I like the way these fit. A little bit tighter. Yeah, that's, that's got a nice fit to it. Perfect. Okay. Now, I don't want to uh, work from that edge of the PCB, so I'm going to work from this side to put this on and over that side. So holding that with an index finger and pulling that down and clearing that circuit PCB. The bent needle nose pliers would have probably made that a little bit easier, but I did it. And it would be a lot easier if you're barehanded, but not me. Yeah, those have a real nice fit. I like the way that sits on there. Good. So now let's get this on the uh, Super Micro card. Very nice. Perfect. Fits right down on that nylon bushing. And in we go. And let's take a look at the back side. Nothing on the back. So we're well clear of that one component on the circuit. And we've done it with a wraparound with no problems. Now again, we're only addressing one issue. And that's as this is configured and this is designed for a laptop. However, we want to see how this is going to perform with this desktop. And going from 92 degrees, my goal would be 10 degrees less, which would be 82 degrees, which gets us below 86. And all the why, what, and how, we'll cover that in the summation. And also we'll cover that some if it works out that we do as we plan go ahead and try a different pad because uh, there's issues with pads that we need to address as well as with the layers and how all that works, but separate video. Now let's get this in the test system. And what are we working with? Okay, un momento. The Gigabyte TRX40 Designare, which has two 16 lane slots and two eight lane slots. And we're gonna be in the primary eight lane slot to reiterate bifurcated in the BIOS to allow four lanes for each of the two drives. In the second 16 lane slot, we have an EGA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, two slots wide. In the primary 16 lane slot, we have the Gigabyte Aorus M.2 to 16 quad card. And in the last, or the second eight lane slot, we have the Gigabyte Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 card, which only requires four lanes. So the other four lanes, we lose those four lanes. There's no way to reallocate that. We can only reallocate lanes within a slot. We can't reallocate lanes that are on a slot to something else unless it's so configured in the BIOS to do so. But with this BIOS, with the Gigabyte TRX40 Designator, it's not. A slot and lane assignment is specific. In other words, that's what you would call dedicated resources. And there's our card. Let's see what we've got. It's interesting how we started out talking about dual M.2 NVMe adapters and had a list. And then from that list, as we tried to talk about heat sinks, we realized we weren't getting drive telemetry. So we had to deal with that. Once we acquired drive telemetry, smart telemetry, which was uh, an issue, feature, or function of being in RAID, then we could do what we're doing now. In the weeds and down the rabbit hole, but it has to be done. And what's going to be curious, when we start working with some of the other dual M.2 NVMe adapters, and when we start looking at some of the other quad cards, they don't have heat sinks. So this issue of one heat sink becomes two heat sinks, becomes four heat sinks. It, it grows and it becomes more of a problem because uh, 
as we do this, we got to remember, this is just a baseline, but we got PCI Express 5 coming up, and we're looking at a drive that'll do 7,000 megabytes because it's PCI Express 4.0, second generation. Well, when we go to PCI Express 5, we're looking at 15,000 megabytes per drive. Wow, that's going to be hot. So it's important now that we look and kind of figure this out because there's lots of options on things that can be done. The question is, is what's being done? And uh, I'll, I'll get into some more in the summation because what we want to do now, I don't need to go into the BIOS. All I need to do is go into Windows. We're going to run the test and I'll show you the result at the end of the test. And um, you know what my expectations are. So we'll see if it meets my expectations. Plug it in, turn it on, power up. So two things I'm watching when I power up. One, I know the video has power. And two, I'm looking at the postcodes. But number three, because I have a PC speaker on here that you can't see but I'm pointing to, it allows me to hear post. Once I achieve power on self-test, bio screen comes up, then the operating system as it goes through the tree looking for a bootable device. And we are booting off a uh, Seagate Fire CUDA, I believe it's a 520, that's on the uh, C drive, boot drive, that is on the first connector to the CPU. And since we're on the... Uh, PCI Express connectors, those also to the CPU. Let's check. First thing we have to do is Windows flag E, this PC. We verify drive placement. So we've got the WD Black SN850 on D drive and the Samsung 980 Pro is F. We're going to test D. We'll have drive telemetry on the left with hardware info. We're only going to be looking at sensors and we will identify those two sensors for those two drives. Actually, three sensors. Samsung 980 Pro has two thermistors. The WD Black SN850 only has one. There's the Seagate Fire CUDA. It's running at 33 degrees. And the WD Black SN850 is, uh, let's see, we're looking at current, minimum, max, and average. The minimum was 36 degrees. The current right now is 38. We haven't done anything. And then on the Samsung 980 Pro, we have two temperatures. We have the thermistor number one and thermistor number two. We're going to be watching, highlighting, this thermistor on that drive as we run Crystal Disk Mark, which will be on the D drive, a one terabyte drive with a one gigabyte test file, all. And watch those numbers and see where we go. Now the first thing we've established with the first number on the read is that this, is, this drive is PCI Express 4 second generation, 7,000 megabytes. The other thing we know that this particular card from Supermicro is spec'd out at PCI Express 3.0 but we're getting the speeds that we need to achieve. And we also achieve that same speed with a second drive on this card, the Samsung 980 Pro. 57 degrees. Now for those that have not been watching, we will achieve our highest temperature when we get to the rights, and it will be the second set of rights. And I hope we stay below 82 degrees. And remember, we're working with the stock material, which is literally a sheet of copper and a thermal pad. It's interesting, we dropped down to 58 degrees It'll heat up again when it gets to the rights. Right now our maximum temperature has been at 65 and when we get to the second number and I will stop the test when the test is completely finished. And the test is complete. Our top temperature was 69 degrees max. Our minimum was 36 as we started and our current temperature at 61 has dropped down to 60. So our average temperature was 57 degrees. Well I don't know about you guys but I was disappointed in the first copper but I'm impressed with the second copper. Now I'm really curious to see what the third copper heat sink is going to do. Uh, that is most fascinating. So of uh, three things that we could do something about, uh, those two items that are in the package, which is the heat sink and the thermal pad, we, we, we've addressed those two things. The third item will be according to the um, laptop, but we have enough information to warrant that when we open that laptop to put that drive in, we have something that may help us, but we may have something else that may help us a little bit more. That's my point. So even though this heat sink is designed for a laptop, uh, wow, because I'm thinking, okay, if I put this on a board where I've got two drives, I'm not adding any weight. What if I put this on a board like a quad card that's got four drives where I get more concerned about the weight? And what can I do about this in terms of uh, making it better with a different thermal pad? I'll say stay tuned to that because... Uh, I'm curious now to see what uh, number six is going to do. I want to thank you guys for joining us. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. We're out.